Hello and welcome back to my England to America Paradox Interactive Historical Playthrough Mega Series. This is video two of the final Hearts of Iron 4 segment where we were playing as a USA. We're going to pick up right where we left off. And uh, it is now 1941. We played from 36 to 41. 1936 to 1941. Previously as America waiting for Pearl Harbor to be attacked uh in reality in real life that happened december 7th but here we can see we're only um on the 24th of july and japan has declared war on us so let's take a look at what's going on in the u.s again a lot of this is just right where we left off but it's probably worth taking a look at we've gone all the way down the new deal line of national focuses uh, become the arsenal of democracy. The giant has woken up. Wartime, uh, maritime, wartime industry, excuse me. The only thing we have left to start is the Manhattan Project, and we do need to start that. The Manhattan Project did start, I believe, in 1941. Uh, the Pentagon was built in 1941 as well. And uh, so we need to get those things going. We've done a little bit of air, a lot of Navy, because this, this video is going to be focused exclusively around the battle with the Japanese in the Pacific. So I'm going to do this video and the next video. I think there's only gonna be four total um, in a little bit of an odd way. And that is we're gonna rewind back to this time for video three. We're gonna start here at the 24th of July, 1941. No reason other than that's when video one ended. And for this video, we're gonna play forward quite a bit in the Pacific fighting against Japan. And I'm not actually not gonna do anything just so that I can keep my focus. Um, then when the third video comes, I'm probably gonna make all the same moves that I made in this video, but we're not gonna show it. We're gonna focus exclusively on the uh, African and European side of things. But this time around, we're gonna focus exclusively on the Pacific, which is why this video is called The Pacific. Now, to get started, we need to do a few things that I haven't done uh, before, and that is actually train military. Uh, so it's probably worth discussing, I would say. Do I have tanks in this one? I do. Okay. It's probably worth discussing that the United States has military at this point. Um, you know, a fair amount of divisions. Um, let's see here. Da -da -da. But not, not anywhere near what we're going to need to have. But remember, at this point, we, we weren't at war. We are now, of course. You can see it here. We're at war. Um, and so we're going to really start ramping up um, the training uh, of our divisions. So what we're first going to do is put some uh, Marines in place because I want them where we're going to train. Let's train Marines at in California. And I'm going to actually, we're going to have as many of our Marines as we possibly can. So we're going to train our maximum uh, amount. In fact, we don't, we're at our special forces cap at this point. So this is the most Marines uh, divisions that we can train right now. Following that, I'm going to set up two independent lines uh, of just regular infantry and we'll put let's see one um really bad with my let's, let's go for georgia right and uh let's put one, two, three, four, five, six. was that six yes uh go ahead and collapse those and then let's get another set of infantry going let's do it in good old texas um, the South, I don't, I don't know if, if divisions were trained heavily in Texas, but the South was used a lot for um, infantry division, uh, and I didn't do it. There we go. All right, so we'll go ahead and set that here in Texas, and we'll also do that one, two, three, four, five. So we should be able to get those started uh, pretty well. Okay, these are my Marines. I thought I collapsed them already. Uh, six divisions. There we go. Okay. So we're going to get started training, and then we're going to ship these out. 
Now, material and personnel wise, the Pacific Theater only got, by way of military agreement, 30%. So that's going to be a little bit tough. Uh, I'm going to try to do that as historically accurately as I possibly can. I'm going to send all my Marines over. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, and I'm going to only send 30% of my infantry uh, over there. In terms of what we're going to send Navy-wise over, we're going to get into that. Right now, my Navy is just a super hot mess of people everywhere. I have a lot of ships trained, which is good. But I'm going to square them off into Atlantic fleets and Pacific fleets. I'm not going to do that and torture you while I do that. We'll get that going uh, privately, and then we'll uh, dig in and talk about the Navy. I think that's where we need to get started. Okay, while I'm getting my Navy Ready. put together, I'm going to relocate this one division here to this area known as Bataan. Very significant uh, in the beginning of this uh, war this battle and so uh, what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and put a commander here I'm going to choose somebody whose name I don't recognize for a reason uh, this guy Leslie McNair I have no idea who that is and then let's go ahead and create so that he's the commander of this division and let's go ahead and add this commander of the entire uh the entire like all the divisions in um the pacific and it's going to be this fine fellow here douglas macarthur so douglas macarthur was present in the philippines when the japanese began their attack he was uh criticized by the president uh because he didn't act quickly enough, and in fact, several uh, American planes were destroyed before they, while they were on the ground. And the president basically said to him, "On the ground," and like freaked out. Uh, and and later, somewhat shame came to him. We're going to simulate that here in this area of Bataan. I'm just doing that now. We'll get back to it. I'm basically struggling with uh, fleet management at this point uh, because it's uh, super awesome and i'm super noobish so anyway i promise to uh, not send you through all that nonsense and i will go ahead and um get that under back underway and we'll we'll resume here in a little bit in the meantime i'm not going to oppose the japanese uh, all that much because they actually for a, a few months uh, really just ran roughshod over this entire and we're, we're going to let that happen now well, as the japanese begin pushing into uh, the Philippines, uh, they really crushed everybody that was in their path. And MacArthur yes, uh, was ordered by the president to fall back and to retreat. And he retreated, in reality, to Australia, uh, which was used as a base for a lot of our operations. We haven't really been able to get with Australia yet because, I'm assuming because, uh, we're not officially involved with the Allied powers. We haven't joined their faction. I suppose we could try to do it. Where am I? Um, let's see. Isn't there something that asks for like joining their faction, I thought. There it is. They're not really interested. Um, I I've seen it happen before, so I think we need to wait until Germany declares war on us, which did happen. Hasn't happened in the game, but it did happen in real life. Uh, and then we become a part of the faction. We can probably land in Australia and everything. However, in order to simulate uh, Douglas, Douglas MacArthur's famous, infamous, um, retreat. We're gonna go ahead and do that now, and I, I, I probably could just fall back to say Hawaii. Let's go ahead and try and do that. Can we? No, cannot transport from a non-naval base location. Is there not a naval base here? 
there is not. Well, it kind of looks like there is. Uh, I guess the naval base is here in Manila. Okay. So we can do that. Um, I hope we don't get killed. This is the area that they fell back from, and he left his troops to fight uh, on an island uh, to defend on an island called Corregidor. Uh, and they basically were surrounded, starved out, sieged, and eventually defe defeated and m marched through Bataan, what was known as the Bataan Death March. And that became a rallying cry for all the U.S. Uh, military in the Pacific. Remember Bataan! Meanwhile, Douglas MacArthur got himself easily out of Dodge, and um, as Move he back. left... Oh, that's why. I'm here. Okay, and I'm not going to be able to cross over. Ah, uh, well, that sucks. Um, Move out! Can I do this? I doubt it. No, it's like he'll try and fight. Oops. Well, I guess we're going to get encircled and killed anyway. In reality, what he did is he retreated and said this famous phrase, I will be back, or I promise to be back, or something like that. To sort of make himself seem like a hero. Meanwhile, he left his men to starve and be sieged to death and eventually tortured to death uh, on, their, on their island. So, uh, yeah, brave guy, right? So, uh, I guess maybe it's fitting that he's going to be encircled and killed. Looks like we might be able to push on through, actually. I was kind of surprised. Um, I wouldn't have minded letting him kind of suffer, but I guess we're going to be able to get through here. So, really my whole goal is just to get through and fall back. Alright, so I should be able to, I hope, transport to Hawaii. Sorry for all the uh, running around here. Okay, so there you go. I will return. Excuse me, it's, uh, apparently it's, I came through and I shall return. And that, that is indeed what happened. He came through and he shall return. So, off he goes. Bye-bye. Now, again, he should have gone to Australia. Um, so that is not historically accurate, what we just did there. But uh, off you go, Douglas MacArthur. See you later. So we're going to let the Japanese kind of roam around here for a little bit and do what they did. And hopefully we don't get tagged. Uh, okay, this is convoy defense. Although it's looking like they're, they're going to get us here. But we're in the middle of it. Maybe he won't make it out after all. <laughs> uh, that would be pretty funny. Uh, and in the meantime, the Japanese Navy is taking apart the Asiatic fleet. Pretty well. Uh, I put them on convoy defense. That has really not gone well at all. We're getting uh, our butts kicked out of here pretty badly. That wasn't deliberate. It's probably mostly just due to the fact that I don't know how to play this game. But um, I do have a large Pacific fleet assembled. So let's talk about that. Obviously, the Navy was uh, a big deal in the Pacific. You can see that I've separated into uh, the Atlantic Theater and the Pacific Theater. Pacific has only slightly less than the Atlantic does. Uh, I don't know if that 30% that I talked about earlier applied to ships or just to um, the mil you know, the, the armed, like the army, army marines. Um, but anyway, in addition to the materials that I've been reading so far and talked about already, uh, I need to thank my brother-in-law uh, for referring me to this book, The Last Stand of the Tin Can Sailors by James D. Hornfisher. We'll go ahead and put that up there. What an amazing read. Holy cow. Uh, and really, it, it talks about the Battle of Late Gulf, which uh, took place right around this area. And what an amazing story. And really a, a, a tremendous story of American courage and, and valiantness. Va is that a word? Valiance? Valiancy? <laughs> anyway. Uh and so detailed. So anyway, in the spirit of that, uh, I have decided to name all my uh, Pacific Main Fleet Task Forces Taffy, 
uh, which came from the book that I was reading. And the, the Taffy fleet is headed by uh, Admiral William Bull Halsey. I think he hated that name, Bull Halsey. And uh, boy, did I learn a, a lot from reading that. And I think really probably the creators of the game must have read that as well. The destroyers really did serve as like screens. And they protected their carriers as best as they possibly could, like circling them like wagons practically. And, and even though it wasn't the goal to get hit and killed, that was kind of one of their functions. Is if a torpedo was coming in, it would have to go through a destroyer or kill a destroyer before it could take out these precious resources, the battleships and the carriers, especially the carriers. Uh, I could not say how I could not say enough about how important carriers were, uh, and really, air flight and air warfare was still just coming into its own back then, and naval air warfare uh, was really big. We're going to talk about that a little bit more at the Battle of Midway, but for now, what I have is I have these three taffy units, and we are going to move them into action and get them fighting against the Japanese fleets uh, in the area here. And you can see we're already not doing well at all, and my poor little Asiatic fleet um, had had some struggles here. So we're going to move those, those fleets in and join the fight. As I begin to engage with my navy in the Philippines and the Pacific, the fall of Manila happens, so the Japanese completely occupy the Philippines. Again, we we left, and uh, we will be back. But right now, we're just trying to spot and attack the navies that are here to get the upper hand so we can hopefully bring about the invasion. There's a few events that are going to happen before that, but uh, I thought that was worth, worth looking at. We're going to do something a little bit weird. Um, but historically accurate. While the U.S. was really mustering their entire force and, and their, their naval force to be able to uh, re begin repelling the Japanese, they, they did small, frequent raids uh, of a type. And so we're going to do one right now. Uh, specifically, one of the most daring raids performed was by Lieutenant Colonel James Doolittle, and his squadron of bombers. And what they did uh, was they mounted strategic bombers, typically used by the, the army, not the navy, on a um, on carriers, and they bombed Japan uh, out of naval range. Selected task forces cannot move here. Why can we not move there? Um, well, I was hoping... Well, I think we can do it here. So what we're going to do to simulate Doolittle's raid is we're going to just go all in here and we're going to turn port strike on and see what we can do uh, in terms of simulating Doolittle's raid. Now, what they the, these planes did not have enough fuel to make it. And um, so they landed in China. Uh, it's kind of wild. So I think we can do this, right? I did this once before. We, you cannot strategic uh, bomb. Um, you, you cannot use strategic bombers against... Um, come on. Uh, fr from carriers, you, you just can't. Uh, and so, okay, that's what we're. That's why I'm having a problem here. But the problem is we can't get close enough. Uh, okay, okay oh, we can't get close enough. All right, let's go right here. Now we're we're super exposed here, but I think we should be able to do it. So let's go ahead and switch back. Yeah, there we go. Switch back to our Air Force, and we will not intercept, not air superiority, not naval strike, but port strike. And I think you got to port strike the land. Did I do that right? I don't think so. You got to go, let's see. 
Oh, and then we gotta, there we go, yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward that and see what happens with my, <laughs> with Doolittle's raid. Um, unfortunately, Doolittle's raid is uh, living up to his name and it's do little, it's doing little, get it? Ha, <laughs> see what I did there? Um, so I'm just gonna stop and uh, move back to the Philippines. I do have a port strike going on where I discovered a task force in port and I'm, uh, you know, working on them here. It's just kind of slow and it's like, hey, you did 13.3 damage to this one ship. Cool. Didn't sink it, but you know, okay. And so we just keep hitting it. <clears throat> anyway, what I'm going to do is just basically cancel all this and we'll move them back to the Philippines. What the next thing we're really hoping for is our big battle, our big equivalent of Midway. So what was the battle of Midway? First successful port strike. This made me happy. We can, uh, I guess, make it seem like that was Doolittle's raid, even though it was out here on one of the islands. As far as what was Midway goes, Midway was really the reversal of fortunes for the Americans during the engagement in the Pacific in World War II. Up until that point, the Japanese stood very strong, and they had the element of surprise with them. And basically, all the Japanese commanders had said that if we enter into a long and protracted war against the U.S., we will lose because they just couldn't keep up. They couldn't keep up um, supply, materiel, personnel, equipment, economy. I think I mentioned in the previous uh, video, they imported 80% of their oil from us. And so it's not like we're going to keep telling them, like, sure, you can have our oil, which really is funny because I've wondered, do you have to embargo them? Um... Okay, I think because we're at war, they can't... We're, we're already sort of by default embargoed. If anybody wants to laugh at me uh, in the comments and let me know why I'm so stupid, uh, I'd, be appreciate, I'd appreciate that. Anyway, so back to Midway. Now, first of all, where is Midway? Um, it turns out it's right here. And we have it, actually. So you can see San Francisco to Midway, right? And so Midway was located there. And the Japanese wanted to make a strike against uh, some American territory. And we were having a hard time figuring out what their encoded transmissions were saying. And there was one of our intelligence officers believed that they were targeting Midway, the code name AF. Uh, that's Alpha Frank. And, but we couldn't tell what AF actually was. They knew they were going, we knew they were going to attack AF. We didn't know what AF was. So they simulated a problem with their water supply on Midway, broadcasting out so everybody could hear it, that our, our water supply is busted, oh, we need to get fixes, all that sort of thing. Well, the next thing you know, the Japanese sent a quote-unquote encoded message saying that AF was experiencing water issues. And at that point, we knew that they were going to attack Midway. Unfortunately, there's no real way I can simulate this. So the closest that I've thought to come is to try to arrange a big naval battle, a big one, big ships versus big ships, where I win. So I'm hoping that that will come in the, uh, in the Philippine Sea, where I have three task forces uh, stationed out, you know, looking for interception and spotting and all that sort of thing. So let's hope for the best. Uh, at when mid the Battle of Midway occurred and we were the victors, that uh, really was the, the turning of the tide. And, and it's when we reversed naval fortunes and began to achieve naval and air superiority in the Pacific. Okay, this could be it. A little bit loud, sorry about that. A lot of my ships coming in. We basically did a convoy defense. And then we have unknown ships are incoming. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, so, big battle, big lots of noise, I mean, we have clearly massive superiority on numbers here, so we're going to uh, do a serious amount of damage here. This is Midway. Alright, that was pretty good. Six destroyers, four light cruisers, four heavies, 
And a battle cruiser. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. Sorry for all the noise. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm going to keep that tactic up here. Um, eventually broaden the net beyond just the Philippine Sea. Basically what I've done is I put one task force on patrol, the other on convoy defense, and the other on and my big one on convoy intercept, or excuse me, on strike force to intercept. That worked out really well. So following our simulated battle of Midway, um, our my naval superiority has really been pretty well cemented. Um, and this just puts me in a little bit of an awkward situation from a gameplay perspective. Like, step it up here, Japan. Um, the next thing that I wanted to do was the Siege of Guadalcanal, which was very significant uh, in the Solomon Islands. And here it is, Guadalcanal, right? Well, as you can see, let's just make this a little bit clearer. We could probably stick with logistics, that's fine. Um, Guadalcanal in the Solomons is, uh, let's go back to Japan, is purely owned by Australia. And there's no Japan anywhere. Japanese already tried, or supposed to say, they were supposed to take Dutch East Indies, didn't. Um, really, they haven't even taken the Philippines all the way yet. Um, so this is not looking, not super historically accurate. And I really don't need to invade Australia just to do uh, the siege of Guadalcanal. I went ahead and just reloaded, tried this whole thing again just to see if I'm doing anything stupid or weird. And uh, so far things have stayed mostly the same. Uh, which is fine. Pretty sure... Okay, the Philippines are still owned by the Philippines. Uh, partially, Japan's got half of them. And, and so they pushed down into Guinea here pretty pretty heavily. And I'm just kind of sick of waiting, really, for them to take Guadalcanal so I can have the historical siege of Guadalcanal. So I think instead what I'm going to do... Maybe I did this already is we'll just go ahead and plan a naval invasion of Guinea, and we'll make that seem like the siege of Guadalcanal. Now, the Australians are losing ground here uh, pretty, pretty badly, but it looks like there's a fair amount of attrition on all sides and uh, supply issues, and, and they're not exactly, you know, really wrecking the Australians. At least it doesn't seem like it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and have MacArthur and his homie here plan a naval invasion. Let's see here. Uh, yes, from you. And let's go ahead and try and split their forces. Now, there's a big mountain range here, so I don't know how well that would do us. Um, I don't know. I'm really liking this one right here. Okay, so we're going to begin this naval invasion, and I'm going to get one of my taffy units to um, support that. So you, we're going to take you off convoy escort and put you on naval invasion support. And so let's go ahead and wait our 21 days and see what this, oh, 31 days. All right, let's fast forward. Okay, so 31 days up. Let's go ahead and push the button. And let's see what this naval invasion looks like. Okay, well, uh, give it a little time goose there so you don't sit there and watch me do nothing forever. Okay, so naval invasion successful, probably not that successful historically, you know, uh, historically speaking. Um, so let's go ahead and just push in. So with the landing made, 
uh, by my marines, not that I needed to really use them. Um, it's time to reinforce. I, I do need a lot, and I've just let everything up here go, just ready to kind of wrap this video up, actually. Uh, so I'm going to look at some of my div uh, divisions and training on land. And uh, I have a fair amount yes, of them. 12 to add to my... So what we're going to do is I'm basically just going to put these guys in that army. And they should, uh, by, by way of being added to that army, just kind of get on over there. Uh, I thought they would. Unable to find a valid path to the target. Not so sure that that's true. Anyway, we'll get that. We'll get back to that in a, in a minute. Um, so I'm trying to spread out and take this other naval base here and just sort of create this as my landing zone. Then we'll get the army over here and uh, you know dig in and then uh, take the take the island. Okay, and the army boys are arriving, so those reinforcements, we should be looking pretty good. Really would like to push this other naval base, and then what would be really nice is recovering that airstrip. Uh, maybe it was destroyed or something. Don't, not sure where it went. Alright, we should be able to do pretty well here. Uh, I think I significantly outnumber them. So let's um, let's get it wrapped up. Okay, so I'm definitely pushing them pretty well. Um, my incompetence at playing this game, I'm sure, is completely screwing with me. I've got low supply all over the place. Um, that's a problem. Doing okay, I suppose. I have no air here, which is stupid. Um, I've got carriers, but all my carriers have only fighter and naval bomber rolls on them, no close air support. So what I'm going to do is just kind of wrap this up and just say goodbye at this point. A uh, little bit of frustration, but again, that's mostly just because I really don't know how to play this game. Um, so I apologize for that. Anybody who's watching me and just screaming at the, t at the, at the your monitor like, oh my gosh, you're so stupid. You're right. Um, I'm more focused on the history aspect of it. It's fun. I enjoy it. Um, but anyway, so things that went historically wrong is the Japanese never came through and took the Solomons here. So I never, you know, had to do the actual siege of Guadalcanal. Instead, it's really the siege of Guinea, right? Um, and they're they're starved out pretty well here, so I could probably push them... A bit further I'm not sure what these people are doing this guy's trying to retreat I guess so we could go ahead just to see what happens all right a couple of restarts and um, we are pushing them pretty hard here we're gonna push them into the ocean now the Japanese were known I think I mentioned this once before for being fierce fierce fighters who would fight to the death there were some battles where only like five Japanese lived out of thousands that they would fight to the death. And so uh, this seems to be pretty much what's going on. So we're going to say goodbye to the Pacific for now and uh, shift our focus. We're going to rewind in time. Remember I said we're going to do that. We're going to go back two years. And we're going to go back to the beginning of the war in 1941 for the U.S. And we're going to focus on Africa and Europe. I'll see you next time.